10. Okay, so I think what I want to do is questions seven and nine, because they are actually related. They are both describing kind of the same thing, I think. Um, so it's just in a slightly different context. And I, I think this is something that can, um, something that can help uh, reinforce the idea of relativity of simultaneity. Because here, because uh, I think here we are going backward and I think doing this backward helps us um, <laughs> reimagine the forward thing, which is, so here I'm deliberately describing events that are uh, separated in time. And I'm the way I'm asking here, I'm saying there's a way to get these events to happen at the same time in another reference frame. So uh, yeah, I think that's what the hint is talking about. So, so let me do that. I think there's enough of white space here. I can do this through a zoom writing and I'll plug in the actual numbers. So, um, so let me just start by illustrating this on a space-time diagram so that I have some concrete thing to um, think through and uh, consider. So my space-time diagram, so this would be the space-time diagram of this observer who's seeing this uh, separation in time. So for this observer, it's uh, always nice in terms of presentation to put uh, one of the events at the origin. That way I don't have to keep writing Delta, uh, one of the events at the origin. So I can just uh, deal with the space-time coordinate of the other event. So the other event, it's separated at se 700 meters. So I need to go out to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 700 meters or so. And it's gonna be at some later time by this amount. And I'll just, uh, uh, I, I don't know, well, so one, 1. 1.5. So this point here, is the space-time coordinate of the other event. These are my events A and, or actually, sorry. Um, yeah, events A and B. And I will use the uh, labels, frame S and frame S prime to, to, to designate the, the reference frame. So frame S is my uh, first observer's reference frame. It's at rest. And the second observer will need to be moving. Now here's uh, um, in the space-time diagram, it's uh, always the x-axis and the lines, other lines that's parallel to the x-axis that describes simultaneity because all the points along the x-axis has the time coordinate zero. So what I want for my other reference frame, frame S prime for the second observer is I want it to be arranged in such a way that both the points A and B lie along the X prime axis. So this is what I want to happen. I want my coordinate axis to be so that this uh, X prime axis actually connects these two points. When that happens, these two events will happen simultaneously in this particular reference frame. So this is my CT prime axis for my frame S prime and uh, A and B are simultaneous in this reference frame. And if you remember things about Lorentz transformation and drawing of a space-time diagram, I've pointed out this before, how the slope of this line is um, one over beta and slope of this line is equal to beta. Uh, beta uh, representing the, you know, beta is the V over C, where V is the speed of the reference frames or uh, speed of the second observer. So that actually gives something uh, very easy and nice. Um, this line that connects A and B should have slope beta. And I, I know the coordinates of this. I think I can actually calculate the slope really easily. Um, slope of um, slope of uh, the rise, 1.5 times 10 to the minus a second, divided by uh, a, uh, 700 meters. So uh, that's gonna be my, yeah, that's gonna be my beta. <laughs> so let me write that down. Um, wait, that didn't sound right. 
rise over the run? <laughs> okay, so just so that I don't confuse myself with the units, let me do this rewrite before I start plugging in numbers. Because I labeled this axis as CT. So this separation here should not really be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. It should be C times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. So let me first do that pre-processing of numbers, and then I'll do calculate the slope as rise over the run. So, um, so the the rise is gonna be the C, or uh, I think uh, if I just use three, that'll be enough for precision for this question. So three times uh, ten to the eight meters per second. So C times the time that's a given. 1.5 times 10 to the minus eight seconds. Okay, that's beginning to make sense. 1.5 times 10 to the minus eight seconds. So they will multiply out to something reasonable for 0.5 CT uh, divided by the distance separation, 700 meters, divided by 700. So an observer that's moving at 0.643% uh, of the speed of light we'll see these two events occurring at the same, uh, we'll observe these events occurring simultaneously. Uh, so 0 0.00643, 0 0.00643. And I use the observe in the sense that I've defined in an earlier lecture where, um, so, you know, I'm not saying that the observer will literally see these light from these events arriving at uh, him at the same time. It depends on where he is. He needs to be at the midpoint. So I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that after he's accounted for all the signal delay time and figure out when and where things exactly happen, once he's done that reconstruction, then he'll see or he'll observe. <laughs> the reconstructed picture will show that these two occur simultaneously if the second observer is moving at this speed relative to uh, the first observer who saw this separation in time. So, okay, so let me, uh, in a similar way, look at the other question that's basically the same thing. So let me see if I can preserve this and reuse some of the drawings. So this is the other question that uh, I guess I do need to erase some of this stuff. Um, uh, as you read through it, you will see uh, they kind of <laughs> sound similar to what we just went through with a slightly different set of numbers. Um, the other one was uh, numbers that are uh, more reasonable to uh, something terrestrial. I guess not quite tabletop because 700 meters, that's still quite far. That's like size of an aircraft carrier. Is that how big they, those things are? Um, but um, this is not astronomical numbers, uh, things that are 2 billion meters apart. Um, so, okay. Um, it says uh, two astronomical events are observed from Earth to occur at a time of 0 0.3 seconds apart. So, Yeah, and I guess for our own convenience, I could say one of those events are at Earth. So that's this event A here. And let's say we define T equals zero to be at that event. And my other event happens 0.3 seconds later as observed from Earth, again, with a caution that observe means you reconstruct with the signal delay time accounted for and figure out when things actually did happen. And this other second event is observed to happen 0 0.3 second later. So 0 0.3 second apart and a distance separation of two times 10 to the nine meter from each other. So this is my earth event that's on earth and my other event that occurred 0 0.3 second later, it occurred at uh, two billion meters away from earth. And this uh, uh, straight axis is my frame S. That's the Earth observer's reference frame. And um, what the question is asking is how fast must a spacecraft to travel from the side of one event towards the other? So from say Earth to directly towards the second event in terms of it's a space coordinate in order to make the event occur at the same time simultaneously when measured in the frame of reference of the spacecraft. So that's my moving reference frame. 
that's my frame S prime. It must be moving at this speed beta that will allow this uh, a slope of the space-time axis to be tilted in just the right way so that the X prime axis will connect both of these points, the point on Earth and point um, farther away at 2 billion meters away. Um, then in this uh, new reference frame with this new space-time uh, axis, the, both of these points have the time coordinate T prime equal to zero because they are both on the X prime axis. So, so this beta is again, the rise over the run. Uh, rise is, <laughs> I'm gonna be careful this time again. The rise should really be CT, not just the T. So uh, for the rise, I'll calculate speed of light C times time 0 0.3 second. And then for the run, that's uh, this many distance. So the rise is, um, so speed of light three times 10 to the eight meters per second, uh, approximately times 0 0.3 second. That's a CT, my uh, rise in calculation of this slope here, divided by the run, uh, the distance in space in the earth reference frame, the two times 10 to the nine meters, uh, two times 10 to the nine meters. So this uh, spaceship should be moving at 4.5% of speed of light or 0.045. And for these questions to work, uh, these uh, numbers have to be given in a very particular way. Um, it, it's covered in the lecture about the space-time intervals. Um, basically, uh, you could have a situation where these events are too close together so that they are not a space-like separated. There's no way for someone to move fast enough to uh, make these events simultaneous. Um, so with the numbers given here, they are uh, they are space-like separated. But if uh, this space separation is too small, then um, then I guess uh, what it means is it becomes possible for someone traveling at speed less than speed of light to get from one event to the other event. Then they become time-like separated and. Uh, so for those events like that, it's impossible to make them occur simultaneously in any reference frame. In, uh, instead, they have a definite uh, past and present relationship because in whatever reference frame you are in, one of those two events occur at an earlier time and the other occurs at a later time. So uh, I think all the questions I have only uh, have you do this simultaneity thing because it, it, again, it's the relative deal of simultaneity that conceptually trips up people. So I want you to get enough practice so that um, when you have to make similar reasoning in consideration of special relativity paradoxes that it, uh, it feels more familiar to you as a result of having built up this uh, special relativistic intuition.